Okay, good afternoon students. I've got a quick video for you to discuss a couple concepts today that you might find useful. Let's discuss lattice energy now. Lattice energy is a energy of ionic bonds. And so I want to use a model real quick, kind of one, kind of silly, but good for analogy. Let's imagine this orange as our cation something like potassium ion or something, right? And then we've got this apple representing an anion, say a chloride ion, right? So if we had one formula unit, right, we would have one potassium and one chloride, right? In a real sample, we've got potassium, chloride, potassium, chloride, potassium, chloride, on and on in the dimension of this way, right? Not only that, we've got them repeating in a second dimension and in a third dimension, think about it vertically. So we could imagine a packing diagram with potassium and chloride repeated again and again, interacting with one another. In a sense, then, each chloride would have a potassium to its left, to its right, in its back, in its front, above, and below. So six of them in a very tightly packed diagram. And likewise, we'd have that number of chlorides around potassium. That's kind of a normal situation for ionic compounds. Now, the lattice energy, remember, is defined as the amount of energy required to break apart one mole of a solid, an ionic solid, into its component, gaseous ions. So let's write that equation down real quickly. Okay, so here we see the equation for lattice energy. Generically, from your book, we see mx solid goes to mn plus gas cation plus xn minus m minus gas ion, right? Now, if we look at KCl, potassium chloride, solid going to K plus gas and Cl minus gas. That's essentially what we have there. Now, we have a one-to-one -one ion in the case of KCl. The ions have a certain uh, ionic radius, right? And so we're mo remember for our model, if this is K plus and this is Cl minus, right? And they have an ionic radius and then there's an ionic radius here. Right, so we get an idea then by adding the ionic radius what the distance between the nuclei would be. Right? And so that distance is kind of important. Right? The larger the distance, the bigger the ions we go, right? Sort of the weaker the interaction. Right? The larger the charge, right? Meaning the um, less electrons here, more electrons here the stronger the interaction, right? And so you see that there's a formula for the lattice energy that we can write up. And we're gonna write that one up using KCL here on the board in just a second. So here's our formula. And if we used plus one and minus one here for KCL times some constant C here that's get, that we could look up, <clears throat> if we had their ionic radii, we could sum these to get the distance between the nuclei, and we could calculate what the lattice energy is. Notice then, if this is larger, this is smaller, right? So the lattice energy is smaller with larger radius sizes, but it's also impacted by the charge. The greater the charge, right? So if we have two plus times two minus, right? That's a factor of four difference up here, right? If we have three plus and three minus for the charges, that goes to a factor of nine increase. Okay, so keep this in mind if one's comparing, right? So if your distances are more relatively the same between ions and your charge increases, the lattice energy, the energy required to break them apart increases, meaning that you have a more stable or higher, higher uh, more stable ionic compound, ionic bonding. So look at this. Um, we won't talk ex 
explicitly much about the Born-Haber cycle, but if you're reading in your book in section 7.4, 7.5, my bad, um, you can look at ionic bond strength and lattice energy. We'll, walk, we'll maybe do a prop, practice problem on Tuesday on this. Um, and be prepared for the possibility of a question relating this concept on exam three. Thank you and have a good day.